Hey guys, Chris Adamo here from Balloons Online in Sydney, Australia. Now I have to apologize for not uploading any videos to YouTube lately. I've been terrible, but look, uh, I really appreciate all of those that have subscribed, everyone that's watched the videos, especially all of you who's commented or um, got in touch with me privately on Facebook. Thank you guys, it really warms my heart to see some of our videos being so helpful, so thank you. Uh, you can see behind me, we've got some crepe paper fringing. Now this is something I've wanted to do a video on for a long time now. Uh, it's 2019 in Australia and these have been red hot all year. And it's a wonderful companion to balloon uh, organics. Um, and so we've learned the hard way, <laughs> like you do, you reinvent the wheel on how to make these guys. And I think our method is quite quick and I really want to share with, it, with you. So um, stay tuned and let me know your thoughts. Thank you. Let's get started. Now, what we have in front of us here is some satin ribbon. This is about 12 millimeters in thickness. A pair of scissors, of course, and all of our crepe paper streamers. Now, if you can get the long rolls, it's much better uh, economy out of those thicker, longer rolls. And it's a bit thicker as well, so we're gonna get a bit more mileage. But in fact, I don't mind the fact that we have different, subtly different widths of our crepe paper, different textures as well, if you look at that closely. I think it adds a little bit more to the dynamic of the fringing that we're gonna make. The last thing we need is staplers. So the smaller the better. This is just stuff that we've had lying around the shop and that seems to work quite well. So, step one. Grab our satin ribbon and have it hung between two points. So this is something I've just made here just for the purpose of the video. However, we have a spot over there where we clamp our satin ribbon up against a big piece of timber. So in this case, we're building some fringing that's gonna be about 1.2 meters wide by about two meters tall, thereabouts. So first step, tie our satin ribbon in one point at about the height of the fringing that we need. So I'll tie that. Now I've used a slip knot here so I can easily undo it. It's important to have a lot of excess ribbon so that we can tie it to the garland thereafter. All right, to our next pole, cut it about there, bring it over. I'm gonna wrap it around that pole relatively tight and at about at our two meters in height. Once again, another slip knot. Okay, so now this is the part that um, it's just so simple. I didn't realize that like, when we started doing it, I thought to myself, well, why weren't we doing this always? It's, we were previously uh, getting our, our streamers and we were measuring uh, on a table uh, two meters and we'd cut them and then we'd bring them up here and we'd staple them on or we'd use hot glue guns or whatever it may be. We'd come back and we'd measure two meters or uh, we were measuring two meters back and forward, back and forward, cut them in individually. But this method, it's just too easy. Okay, so we get our colors, grab our, our streamers, hold on to one side and just throw it over, okay? Next one, hold one side, throw it over. Now what I'm doing with my left hand is I'm pulling the streamer down so it touches the ground. I'm gonna leave those rolls on the ground, it doesn't matter, we're gonna grab them later. Throw it over, left one to the ground just so it touches and just repeat this process. Now of course have some intent as to the color distribution. In this particular job, uh, they just want a lovely random sporadic use of these several soft colors. Bring it over and repeat. So the more rolls you have, the better. It just means there's less time that we need to go up and down to grab those rolls later. So I've got all my ribbon rolls on the ground here. What I'm gonna do is just grab the rolls and cut it just so it's off the ground. Grab them all in bulk. Cut, cut, cut. Grab them all and come back up. Okay, so these are the first few ribbons that we've thrown over. Now what we wanna do is adjust them so that they overlap a little bit and just get sort of a, some kind of placement in which you're happy with that color distribution. So I'm happy with that. Grab my stapler. And because the uh, uh, silk ribbon is fibrous, it's stitched, our staples are gonna hold on that really well. 
So I'm just gonna walk around, bam, 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 one per line of uh, crepe paper. And we're just gonna repeat that process. Up, over, introduce a new color. I'll go down and cut them. Okay, check the positioning. And staple. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, so that's been uh, a few minutes, nothing, right? So what we're gonna start to find, however, is we're gonna get to the end of our rolls on some of the colors. So at this point, I like to use that and just go a little halfway, a little over there. I don't mind, in fact, I really want to see some of the streamers not go all the way to the end. It's a little too consistent. So we can also work with that and start to see a little bit of layering where we have uh, the full length, of course, that we want to the ground. But then on top of that, we can see a bit of light layering here, see where, where it stops at different lengths. Now, you might not like the fact that the end of the streamer has a bit of creasing to it. To me, I don't mind. It depends on your client, of course. Um, but let's have some intentional layering at a different angle here to give it a little bit of depth and a bit of extra thickness at this point. So there you have it, one handmade crepe paper fringing, okay? Uh, super easy, I think all in all, without the fast uh, speed up process there, that was about 10 minutes of my time. Um, here we have about one to 1.2 meters in width. So, you know, we used, um, wasn't quite counting, but maybe about 10 rolls of, of streamers. Some were large, some were small. Of course, it all depends on the variables, how thick you have it, how much of this extra depth that you work with. I had a lot of, gar of uh, crepe paper here that was overlapped, that was double, because it's really nice to get it quite thick um, so that it blocks the, the gap behind. One little tip with our fringing, yeah, it, be careful outside, it'll blow around so much it makes it quite difficult to work with. Um, I always really like to have it up against a wall so that it's a, it blocks, there's no sort of cross breeze or whatever it may be. Um, you can also, once you've made your, your, your fringing, depending on the design, you can sort of then cut it later to give it some shape and some curvature. Um, we use a lot of shimmer curtains as well, where it's obviously pre-made. You embed that within the garland and you can then trim it to form its own curves, its own shape um, in situ once it's installed. So um, in regards to installation, I use these two points that we've already got to attach to the garland. The garland is first installed. And then we add the shimmer, the, um, the fringing. Uh, it might need to be lifted by a point, in which case I'll get a bit of fishing line and I'll sort of just tuck in under there and lift that up within the garland itself. Sometimes it's nice to actually have that separate arc coming from within the, the curves and the bubbles of the organic garland. So obviously lots of things you can do, lots of ways you can play with it. But I hope that tip there um, is helpful for you guys because it saved a lot of time for us. So once again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, um, share with your friends, and if it's helpful, let me know, send me a message. Thank you.